Hi, this is a nice question on coordinate geometry. We've got the line L has a gradient of minus 2 and passes through the point A with coordinates 3, 5. We're told that B is a point on the line L such that the distance AB is 6 root 5. And what we've got to do is find the coordinates of each of the possible points of B. So if this is a question that you haven't done already and would like to have a go, just give you a moment to pause the video and have a go. When you're ready, come back and uh, you can check your work solution with mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, the first thing I want to do, if you've listened to many of my videos before, you'll know that I always like drawing sketches when it comes to coordinate geometry questions. And this is no exception. We've got our axes, say, X and Y. And we've got this point A, which has coordinates 3, 5. So let's just say we go 3 across, 5 up. Let's say it's this point here, A, with coordinates 3, 5. This is not drawn to scale, but just to give us an idea of what's going on. So that's the point A. And we've got a line that passes through A, has a gradient of minus 2. So that's going to be a line that's sloping downwards. So I'm going to have, say, something looking like this. OK, just try and draw that in there. Oops. So you can see I just missed that point out. So what we'll do is just take that out and just move it over to there. So that's our point A. And this is our line L. So we've got a point B that the distance AB is 6 root 5. And root 5 is 2 and a bit. So 6 twos are 12. So AB is a distance just over 12 units. So looking at the sketch here, I can see that B is going to be somewhere up here, I would have thought, and say somewhere down here. So we've got B here with coordinates, let's say, X, Y, or it could be a point down here, B, with coordinates X, Y. Now, how do we get these points X, Y? Well, the first thing I notice is that let's work off this idea that the gradient is minus 2. I'm going to work off that idea, try and develop an equation linking the points x, y to the coordinates of a. And then I'm also going to look at the distance a, b being 6 root 5, form another equation that uh, involves x and y then we'll have simultaneous equations that hopefully we should be able to solve. So that's the route through the problem. So let's start then with the gradient, the gradient AB, okay, which we know is equal to minus 2. And to work out gradient, what we need to do is just the difference in the y-coordinates divided by the difference in the x-coordinates. In fact, Let's just draw a triangle in here. It doesn't matter whether I'm drawing a triangle in here or whether I draw a triangle in this section here. But nonetheless, OK, we're looking at that gradient AB. And that's going to be the difference in the Y coordinates. So we'll do Y minus 5. So we therefore got Y minus 5 divided by the difference in the X coordinates. So that'd be X minus 3. Remember to keep the order the same when you take a pair, OK? And that equals minus 2. You could have done the difference in the y coordinates starting with the 5. 5 minus y over the difference in the x coordinates, 3 minus x. That would equal minus 2. It's essentially going to give you the same solution. OK, what I'm going to do next is multiply both sides by x minus 3, because I don't like having a fraction in that equation. So therefore, we've got y minus 5 equals minus 2 multiplied by x minus 3. And uh, let's expand this out, OK? Therefore, we've got y minus 5 equals minus 2x and then plus 6. Well, we'll leave that equation at that stage, OK? We've got x's and y's in that. We can't go any further as such and solve it. 
we've got two unknowns. So we need another equation. And as I said earlier, we're going to look at the length AB. So I'm going to say also the length AB equals, we're told, 6 root 5. OK, 6 root 5 up here. So we're going to need to think about using Pythagoras' theorem here because it's the distance between two points. And Pythagoras' theorem, remember, is that this side, the hypotenuse squared, AB all squared, equals the sum of the squares of these two lengths, OK? So seeing that, I'm going to square both sides. I'm going to get AB squared. So what we've got is, therefore, AB, if I was to square it, must equal 6 root 5 all squared. Well, that's going to be 6 sixes are 36 times 5. OK, root 5 when you square it is 5. So you've got 36 times 5, which is 180. So how do I get AB squared? Well, as I said earlier, it's Pythagoras' theorem, or um, basically. So we've got AB squared equals this length squared, which is essentially 3 minus x, or you could write x minus 3. It's not going to make any difference, OK? We'll just do 3 minus x all squared. So we've got 3 minus x all squared plus this length squared. So that's going to be y minus 5. But because we're squaring it, it's up to you if you wrote 5 minus y. It wouldn't change it, OK? So I'm just going to write y minus 5 there all squared. And that equals 180. And what I can see is that we've got simultaneous equations. And I noticed I've got y minus 5 here, and I've got y minus 5 here. So this is best left as it stands, OK? I'm going to call this equation 2. I'll just move that 2 just down there, OK? Because that will just give me a little bit more room. OK, so I'll just border that off. So what I'm going to do is essentially sub equation 1 into equation 2. So we'll just write that up here, sub equation 1 into equation 2. And if we do that, what I'm therefore going to have is 3 minus x all squared. 3 minus x all squared. You might even have, as I said earlier, x minus 3 all squared. It's not going to make any difference when we expand it in a moment. And then plus, and this is where we substitute for y minus 5 in here. It's going to be minus 2x plus 6. Minus 2x plus 6. And that is squared. And it equals the 180. OK? So let's expand the bracket now. We've got an equation just with one variable in it, x. So we should be able to solve it. So if we expand this, we've got 3 squared, which is 9. We get twice the product. The product is minus 3x when you times 3 with minus x. We double that, and we get minus 6x, OK? I'm assuming you're familiar with the quick way then of squaring a bracket. And then we square the last term in the bracket. Minus x, if you squared it, is plus x squared. Do the same for this one. Squaring this out, we square the minus 2x. So it's going to be plus 4x squared. And then we get twice the product of these two terms. The product, minus 2x times 6, is minus 12x. Double that, and you get minus 24x. And then we square the last term, plus 6 if you square it, is plus 36. And this equals the 180. OK? We need to just group this up. I notice that we've got a quadratic equation here. So we've got 4x squared plus x squared, which is 5x squared. We've got, for the x terms now, minus 6x, minus 24x, that's minus 30x. And then, being a quadratic equation, we want this to equal 0. So I'm going to subtract 180 from both sides. So I've got 9 here, plus 36, that's going to be 45. Take away 180 is going to be minus 135, and that equals zero. 
And what I can do now is I notice that I've got five, which is a common factor. So if I divide throughout by five, okay, then it will thin this down to x squared minus six x and fives into 135 go 27 times. And if we divide zero by five, that would still be zero. Now I should be able to factorize this. Okay, and we've got a couple of brackets here. I'll just do it by sight. And what are we going to have? We're going to have an x in the front and an x there. We want two numbers that multiply together to give minus 27 and they combine to give minus 6 here. That's got to be minus 9 and plus 3. Okay, so we get minus 9x plus 3x, which is minus 6x. And at this stage, we know that each of these factors should equal zero. So therefore, x minus 9 should equal zero, or the other factor, x plus 3, that should equal zero. And that means that therefore, for this equation, if I add 9 to both sides, x will equal 9. And in this equation, if I subtract 3 from both sides, x would equal minus 3. So I've got my x coordinates. And at the moment, they look good because I can see that the x coordinate here for b is negative. It's to the left of the x coordinate here. So that's good. And I can see that the x coordinate here, 9, is to the right of the 3 here. So that's looking um, consistent with my diagram. Okay, so what I'm going to do is substitute these values, say, into equation 1. You could put them, obviously, into equation 2. It's up to you. But I think 1 is the easiest. So uh, I'm going to say sub, okay, in equation 1. So let's just come down here into this space. So let's start with when x equals 9. So we've got when x equals 9, then we're going to have y minus 5, so therefore y minus 5 must equal minus 2 times 9, minus 2 times 9, and then plus 6, okay? And what we've got here is minus 18 plus the 6 is going to be minus 12, and then if I add 5 to both sides, I'm going to get y equaling minus 7. So therefore, y equals minus 7. We'll do the same now with when x equals minus 3. So when x equals minus 3, we've got y minus 5. Okay, when we substitute into 1, equals minus 2 times x, which is now minus 3, and then plus 6. And if we work this out, we've got 6 here, plus another 6 is 12. And then if I add 5 to both sides, I therefore find that y equals 12 plus 5, which is 17. So find the coordinates of each of the possible points b. It looks like, therefore, then b has coordinates. Well, when x is 9, you get y is minus 7. 9 minus 7. OK. Or we can have the x equals minus 3. We see that y is 17. Okay, so b has coordinates minus 3, 17. And if I just check these out on the diagram, 9 across, 7 down, okay, that looks reasonable. And minus 3, 17, minus 3, 17 up there. I would expect it to be more than 5 anyway, okay? Looks reasonable. So that's another reason for just having a diagram. You can generally check to see whether your answers, as I say, look consistent. Okay, well, I hope you're able to get that one right. And if not, we're able to see where you might have gone wrong.